All right, now, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I want to show you this. Uh, verse, let's start here in verse 21. Now, I want to show you something here. Okay, and, and before we read verse 21, I want you to listen at me close. Okay, all right, so here's the first thing I want you to see. There's a difference between uh, motivational speaking, inspirational speaking. Now, this has nothing to do with our conversation last week. Trust me, it doesn't. But there's a, now we talked about this on Sunday after church. I went over to his house for dinner. His wife made curry chicken and they invited us over. But there's a difference between motivational speaking and the preaching of the gospel. Now, I'm not saying that when you listen to motivational, there are a lot of preachers nowadays who preach motivationally, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, to inspire and so forth and so on. If it's, if it's the gospel, it's fine. But here's the main point I want to get over to you. There's a difference between motivational speaking and the preaching of the gospel. Okay, now you let me know if you get cold. Okay. Now there's a difference. Here's the difference. Motivational speaking, it's based on what you do. In other words, they'll give you some things to do. And if you act on those things and if you do those things, then you'll get the result. So you go to a, you know, a wealth conference and they're going to teach you how to do something or flip houses or make that, whatever it is. And it's based upon, it will work to the degree that after you leave the place, you apply, you begin to act on those things, you begin to do those things, and if it works, they look good. If it doesn't work, then they'll just say, you know, well, you didn't, you didn't do what needed to be done. Now, someone says, well, that's, that's the same thing with the Word of God. Yes and no. Yes and no. There is a difference with the Word. The difference with the preaching of the gospel is when you're sitting under the word of God, it's working right now. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. When you, the difference between the world, inspirational speeches and those things, is it's, it's, it's all dependent on you. The gospel is his power. And his power works as the word is preached. As you sit under the word and you hear the preaching of the word, God is saving you right now. Now, we're not talking about heaven. Salvation has more to do with going to heaven. Uh, it has more in it than going to heaven. Amen. Salvation is the word, the Greek word, sozo. And it's an all-inclusive word. It means to prosper. It means to be in hell. It means to be delivered from the penalties of sin now in this earth. Amen. Amen. All right. So the difference is when you're listening to the word of God, it's working for you right now. As you sit and hear, the word is saving you, giving wisdom, bringing health, bringing peace, bringing joy bringing direction, shedding light on what, whatever your situation is. Now let me show you all this in the Word so that you'll, you'll understand what we're saying. Alright, you there in 1 Corinthians? Alright, now watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, look at this. Let's start here in verse 17 actually. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross, the what? Preaching. The preaching. The preaching of the cross is to them that are perishing foolishness. Now, if, if when you come to church, if, if you have in your mind, well, you know, I, I have better things I could be doing. Well, you know, this is really not as significant as if I listen to this other person. Well, you know, if I listen to, I, I don't know the name of these inspirational guys, but uh, what's their name, Kareem? You know them. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. 
Now, I think he's a born-again Christian. I'm not against him. But if you listen to these things and when you hear the word, if you hear the, the cross being preached and you think, well, you know, that's, you may not call it foolishness, but you may just kind of, well, you know, the Bible says you're turning on the death cycle. You're turning on the death cycle. Just stop that way of thinking instantly. Don't let that way of thinking come in your mind. Now, it happens to me sometimes. You'd be sitting down and you think, I got a million things I need to do today. I don't have time to wake up and read the word for 15 minutes before I go to work. I've got a million things to do. Don't, don't let that thought come in your mind. Amen. Amen. Don't let that come in your mind because you're going to operate. You're going to turn on the death cycle. Now, I'm not talking about physical death. You're going to release uh, death and all that it encompasses, the curse. Amen. Sickness, disease, depression, failure, all those things. Amen. Now, watch this. It's foolishness to them that perish, but unto us, us which are saved, it is the power of God. Verse uh, 19, for it is written, I'll destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Verse 21. Now, here's why I took you here. <clears throat> for after that, in the wisdom of God. Now, this is God's wisdom. This is the way God thinks. OK, after that, in the wisdom of God. The world by wisdom, they did not know God. It pleased God that by the foolishness of what? Preaching. 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 While the word is going forth. Preaching. Preaching. Look at what God does when you're hearing the preached word. Look at what happens when you're hearing the preached word. Say it with me. He saves them that believe. Now, don't focus on the, on the believing part because you may say to yourself, well, see, I still have to do something. It only works if I, if I believe. Well, how does faith come? How does believing come? Yeah. There you go. See, the word covers all your bases. As you're sitting under the word, faith is coming into your heart. It's being imparted to you. And what else is coming, Lisa? Salvation. See, God's system is different than the world system. The world system is you hear something, you go out, and, and, and it's, it's dependent upon you. That's not God's way. God's way is you put my word first. You prioritize my word. And as you sit under my word, faith is coming. Your believing system is changing. Your mind is being renewed. Guess, what is, guess what's happening? Salvation. Salvation. Salvation is taking place. Amen? Amen. Salvation is taking place. This is the way God ordained the system. Don't ever despise church attendance. Don't ever despise it. Amen. One day a week, the first day, Sunday, you take that time to honor God. Amen. The rest of your week. If the first is holy, the lump also is holy. Amen? And so God will honor the rest of your week. When you sit under the word, salvation it's flowing. Let me show you one more verse and then we'll get started today. This is not my message. This is free. I won't charge you. Go to Acts chapter, Acts chapter 10. <clears throat> Acts chapter 10. And let's look here at Cornelius. Now y'all remember when, uh, y'all remember Cornelius, right? Amen. Yes. The Italian, right? First time a Gentile ever got born again, right? And the Italian, uh, 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 the Italian band. He's a leader of the Italian band. And so <clears throat> what happened is uh, he, he was, of course, spending time fellowshipping with God, but he didn't know the true God. He, didn't, he wasn't born again, but he had begun to seek God, just like we did. Well, God began to reveal himself to him. And he said, send for one named Peter. He's going to tell you what you need to do in order to be saved. So he sent for Peter. Peter comes. Peter begins to preach the gospel to him. And as Peter's preaching the gospel to him, as he's hearing words, notice what happens. Look at this. Acts chapter 10 and verse, let's start here in verse uh, 40, 42. Peter talking. And he commanded us to preach unto the people 
and to testify, that is, that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the living and the dead. Verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness. This is extremely important. You understand this because the prophets are the Old Testament. So what he's saying is the Old Testament is just witnessing. It's pointing to the reality, the substance of Christ today. So he says to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever, say that's me. That's me. I'm a whosoever. Amen. Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. So what's he doing? He's preaching the gospel, right? Whoever believes on him shall receive remission of sins. That is the message of the gospel. How do we know? Hold your place in Acts 10. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. How do we know that the remission of sins is the gospel message? 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to show you something very powerful. As you listen to the gospel, boy, I'm telling you, you're doing the smartest thing any man can do. Jesus himself said it. Mary has chosen the good part. Martha was busy working, trying to make things happen. Mary sat and listened. Jesus said, Jesus said, she's chosen the good part and it will not be taken from her. What won't be taken from her? Okay, the listening, what she's hearing. Okay. Now you got to think a little deeper now. Huh? Salvation. What does the word do? The word is a seed. The word produce a harvest. What he's saying is Satan won't be able to steal from her. She's chosen the good part and he can't take it now. See, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The harvest, she's chosen. The, she's not off over here just getting sidetracked. She's focused on me. Satan doesn't have a place. He has nothing in her. He can't steal from her. She won't give him a place. Are, are, you, are you seeing what, what Jesus is saying? What she has chosen won't be taken. The thief can't come into her in, in this area. She's got the shield of the word, the sword of the spirit. She's working the word. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. Say amen even if you don't. It's true amen. anyhow. Amen. amen. All right. All right, amen. All right, now watch. 1 Corinthians 15. The, the remission of sins is the, is the message of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Look at this. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Say the gospel. The gospel. Which I preached unto you, which also you've received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are what? Saved. If you keep in memory that which I preached. See, again, he's linking salvation to what? Preaching. See? Preaching. Preached unto you unless you had believed in vain. Verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. What's the gospel message here? Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. And he rose again the third day. What did Peter preach to Cornelius? Go back to Acts 10 verse 43. What did he preach? Christ died for our sins or the forgiveness of sins, correct? What's that called? The gospel. Are you with me? Amen. Is everybody with me or did I leave some of y'all back at the last stop? No. Okay, y'all with me, right? Okay, so he's preaching the gospel. Notice what happens, Reggie, as he preaches the gospel. Verse, let's read verse 43 again. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him, shall receive remission of sin. Say it with me one more time. Remissions of sin is the message of the... Close that door for me, Corinne. Remission of sins is the message of the... Gospel. One more time. Remission of sins is the message of the... Gospel. How do you know that? Because it says... Where did we look to prove that? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Amen? Amen. So the gospel is the message how Christ died for our... Sins. Amen. Remissions of sins is the message of the gospel. Notice what happens when he's hearing the gospel. Look at what happens to Cornelius when he's hearing the gospel. Verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words. Say these words. These words. What words was he speaking? Come on, church. Good job. Say it one more time. The gospel. While he spake these words, while he spake the gospel, look at what, look at who showed up. The Holy Ghost. Who is the Holy Ghost? You get this right, you don't have to turn there. If you get it wrong, I'll make you turn there. God, the third person. Third person, okay. What, but, but what does the Holy Spirit release? Power. Good. Now, the rest of you didn't know their turn. Acts 1.8. <laughs> All right, go to Acts 1.8. Quick, Acts 1.8. This is what I want you to see. As you hear the word, man, you're rel- the Holy Spirit right now, 
Right now, he's moving. Now, don't look for the spectacular. I think, it, who was it? Me and you, Oliver, we were talking about this the other day about the spectacular versus just supernatural. Right. right yeah. Right. See, don't, God's not magic. Okay? The Spirit of God, you, he, he's moving right now in your midst. He's, he's, he's giving wisdom, direction. He's shining light on a dark area. He's quickening even your physical body, giving life to your body. Amen. All right. So Acts 1, 8, ready? Read. All right, let's do it again. Because some of us read like we never been trained. All right, Acts 1, 8, when you have it, say, I got it. All right, ready? Read. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Stop. When do you receive power? All right. So who connects, who releases God's power? The Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. When did the Holy Spirit fall in Acts chapter 10? At the word. At the word. When they sat under the preaching of the word, Amen. the Holy Ghost fell. Can you see it? Can you see it? Amen. Amen. And so this is the difference between our system, the truth, and the world system. They're just, you know, every dollar, if it's a high dollar, a hundred dollar bill or a twenty dollar bill, every dollar of value is going to have a counterfeit. Hmm. Right. So the world has a counterfeit to what the church has. The church has the preaching of the gospel. The world says that's foolish. Let me go listen to this. Let me go turn on this motivation. Let me listen to this seminar. God says, that's right. I hid it for you. But as you sit under the word, the power of God is working. Don't figure out, well, I need to go home and do this. So I got to fix. Don't even do it. Just relax today. Amen. Let him serve you. Let him serve you. Let him wash your feet. If you don't, he, you don't have any part of him. Let him take care of you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. you, every one of us needs a savior. That's why he came. We can't save ourselves. We can't do it ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. So let him work in your life. Just sit back, relax, and hear. Just keep hearing. And as you hear, the power of God is working. If you understand that, say amen. amen. All righty. Let's get started. Genesis 27. Genesis 27. Well, before you go to Genesis 27, go to Romans 9. I just work here. Romans 9. <clears throat> hallelujah. Give me two hallelujahs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. All righty. Romans chapter 9. Everybody having a good week so far? Amen. Good. Are you glad to be in church today? Amen. I'm so glad to see all of you, man. I missed you. Missed you guys. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Blackstone. Thank you. Praise God. All right. Romans chapter 9. When you have it, say, I have it. Uh -huh. Okay, today we're going to... Oh, my... Uh, that's my daughter. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at Jacob and Esau. And we're going to begin a study. We've been trying to get here for five or six weeks now. We're going to, you know, I, I figured, let me get it in now before Catherine come back. And then she's like, y'all still ain't done Jacob and Esau? <laughs> she, that, there are members, they went to Singapore for over a month. So we had just started when they left. We never, ever got on the message ever. They, so I'm trying to finish it before they come back. The Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Now, huh? Oh, they are? Catherine's here? <laughs> all right, well, all right, now, praise God. Y'all make the sign of the cross when they come in, all right? Now, watch this. Jacob and Esau, why are they so important? Now, it's under the Old Testament. One thing about this ministry, we preach a lot from the Old Testament, but we don't preach the spirit of the Old Testament. The Old Testament is all about thou shalt. It's, it's a system of law. It's based on what you do depends what God will do. We're not under that system. Now we're under the new covenant. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, I'll do a new thing. What is the new thing? I, yeah, I will. I will. It's all about God. You read the, the system of the new covenant. It's all I will five times. I will, I will. Nowhere are you seen except receiving. You just receive what he's doing. The law, you don't see God active. Who do you see active? Thou shall. Anytime people want to hear preaching about what I need to do, you're under the law. Amen. You're under the law, period. Just settle it. 
Just settle it. Anytime you need, you say, I want eight steps to this. I need to know how to get out of debt. I need to know how to get my marriage right. Tell me what, I, what thou shalt do. What shall I do? You're in the system of law. Your place today is to sit and enter into a rest. Amen. Amen. He is the rest. Come unto me, all you who've been working, who weary, you tired, you've been doing everything and it still ain't working. You've been trying to, you've been praying for Frank and he's still crazy. You've been praying for your kids and they still smoking reefer. Rest. Let him go to work now. Amen. Amen. His hand is bigger than your hand. He can stretch further than you can stretch. Amen. Amen. And so let him work. That's the new covenant. That's a whole, that's the whole Bible in two words. Okay. Just let him work. All right. You rest. You keep hearing. You keep receiving. Let his grace flow in your life. Now, Jacob and Esau are going to be a picture of the reality that you and I live in today. Okay. Now, it's under the Old Testament, but everything under the Old Testament is pointing to Christ. The Old Testament is a shadow. It's a picture. It points to the reality of what we have today in Christ. I told you to go to Romans 9, right? Yes. Real quick, go to Luke 24. Hold your place in Romans 9. <laughs> Romans 9. I just want to prove this to our new uh, people here. This way they don't think I'm crazy when I show them all this stuff. Okay, now watch this. Luke 24. We're going right back to Romans 9, but look at Luke 24. Luke 24 and verse 44. This is right after Jesus was raised from the dead. And look at what he says here. Luke 24, 44, when you have it, say, I've got it. it. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning who? Me. Jesus. So everything in the law, first five books, prophet, the Old Testament, mm -hmm. everything in the Old Testament, who, who is it concerning? Jesus. You believe that? Yes. Okay. Concerning me. Now watch this. Verse 45. Then... Jesus opened their understanding that they may understand the scriptures or what's the idea here, Miss Olive, that they may begin to understand the things concerning him in the Old Testament. OK, so the Old Testament, you don't throw it away, but you must see it in light of him. Are you with me? OK, y'all ready to cook? All right. Are you sure you're ready to cook or you still need some toast bread? Nope. You know, like when you go to the Cheesecake Factory, I tell them, keep bringing the bread out until I'm ready for my dinner. <laughs> you want some more bread or are you, are you ready, to, ready for your... All right. All right. Romans 9. Okay. Romans 9. Look at this. Romans 9 and verse... <clears throat> Let's start here in verse 6. All right. Romans 9. Verse six. I'm doing good on time. I'm going to I'm going to do my best today to finish at 1130. Thank God I'm forgiven of sin if I lied. <laughs> All right. Watch this. Romans nine. Verse six. Not as though the word of God hath taken no effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Israel is known as the people of God. And he's saying that the physical descent, the Israelites by, by nature, by blood, he said that's not who God necessarily considers to be his people today. They are not all Israel, which are Israel. Verse 7, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all Abraham's children. Why is this? Because in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, how do we understand this? Very simple. Abraham had two sons. What's their name? Ishmael. Isaac. Paul's point is, Abraham had two children. Both came from him. But God only recognized one as his son. Amen. All right, for the rest of y'all who don't know that, go to Genesis 22. See, my job is to teach you. It's not to entertain you. Go to Gen Hold your place in Romans 9. Go to Genesis. You don't have to turn there, Miss Olive. You're fine. Go to Genesis. Somebody says, God only acknowledged one? Yeah. See, he's trying to show you. Everything in the Bible is written. If you understand that the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible, then you don't just skim over it. You turn over every stone. He's trying to show you something. Him that hath eyes to see, let him see. Okay? Genesis 22. God only acknowledges one. He had two. 
God only acknowledges one. This is Paul's point. Just because somebody's physically related to Abraham does not mean they belong to God. Any different than Ishmael was acknowledged by God as Abraham's child. God never acknowledged Ishmael as Abraham's child. Sarah sure enough didn't. Sarah said, get him and everybody out of here. He was like, no, but they my case. She said, get and, then, and God said, listen to that woman before, before you, we have to do your home going service. Funeral. Y'all call it funeral. All right. Watch this. Genesis 22. Watch this. And it came to pass. Everybody there, right? Yeah. And it came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham. And he said unto him, Abraham. And he said, behold, I'm here, Lord. Verse 22. He said, take now thy son, thy what? Mm. 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 What you say? God didn't say take your son, take one of them. God said take your son, your only. Your only. He only acknowledged one. He only acknowledges Abraham having one son. Say amen. 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 There's a reason he's doing this. Because that Ishmael is of the flesh. He never trusted God. He produced it from his strength, his ability. He didn't have to believe God. Hagar was fruitful. He was fruitful. They don't need to believe God. Galatians 4 calls that the law. It's you living by your own strength. God doesn't even acknowledge it. The house you got, is it an Ishmael house or an Isaac? The car you got, who gave it to you? Did God give it to you or did you get it? Nope. Amen. Amen. The husband you got. No, we're not going to go there. <laughs> Whether it's Ishmael or Isaac, you stuck with him, Jack. You can't turn him over. Amen. All right, now watch this. Romans 9. Look at this, Romans 9, <clears throat> verse 7. Everybody with me so far, right? All right, verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac, say Isaac, Isaac. shall thy seed be called. Verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of of God. Which child of Abraham was born after the flesh? Ishmael. Ishmael. They didn't need to depend on God. Which child did they have to believe God to receive? Isaac. Isaac. See, this, is, this will help locate you. How are you living? Are you living based upon God's promises and faith in his written word? And everything you got, he's going to bring it. Listen, if God doesn't give it to you, you should not want it. Amen. You should not want it. The job you got, is it an Ishmael job or did, did it come because you believed God and he opened the door for you? The career you're in, is it God who, who told you to be there or is the one that you make the most money in? Are you doing what God told you to do? Because that's where the blessing of the Lord is going to be. Amen. It always goes over quite like that when you start talking about, don't talk about my money now. I got my job, they pay me well. Whether it's Ishmael or Isaac, God has got to be all right. <laughs> I'm bringing my tithe, right? <laughs> all right, I'm just trying to help you. No condemnation. You know, God not mad at you nothing. Just, we're learning. Amen. Amen? You're learning. You're learning. You're learning. All right, now watch this. Verse 9. Uh, verse 8. This is, hold on, everybody stop the presses. Come here, Captain. <laughs> Come over here. I, I didn't think you were here. This is Catherine. Some, the people are like, yeah, this the way y'all do church? Yeah, we just family. Amen. How do you do it? Oh, thank you so much. All right, so this is Catherine. Amen. Say hi, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. We missed you, Catherine. They told me I didn't know you were here. We're still at Esau. Yeah, I, I, I told them. I said, I'm trying to hurry up and get through Jacob and Esau before Catherine gets back. They said, Catherine's back. <laughs> I said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I had to wait for her. Amen. All right. Now, so look at this. Uh, verse um, 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise, these are counted for the seed. We are children of promise. When he says children of promise, what is he referring to? Hold your place in Romans 9, go to Galatians 4. To your right. <clears throat> Galatians 4. Praise God. You know, I'm a teacher, so it takes me, I always want to make sure you got a firm foundation. Galatians chapter 4. I was, I was at lunch the other day with Olive, and I, I told her, I said, Olive, you know, I don't really 
She said the things you teach are extremely, um, you know, they're deep. They're, you got to really receive. I said, I don't really think it's that. She said, nobody. Y'all remember when we did uh, uh, Shechem? Yeah. Oh, she yeah. said, nobody ever took Manessa and, and, or Shechem and went through all that. <laughs> we spent like six months on just, it says Abraham came to Shechem. Don't worry about that. You'll, you'll, we'll, we'll, you'll, there's no point. But it, there's a reason it says that. Okay. Now watch this. Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. Okay, what does it mean when he says we are the children of the promise? Galatians 4 verse 21. Tell me, you that desire to be under the law. Now, I got a question for you. How many of y'all want to be under the law? Wave your hand if you do. So then why do you always want to hear messages about what you need to do? That's the law. This is where most of the church is. That's why Paul is saying this. What the Galatians did is no different than what the West Orangers do. He says, tell me. See, the tendency of every man, they want to, you know, how did you get this call? Well, brother, I prayed for nine hours and fasted. And then they had a uh, first and a third Sunday Bible study that I held personally myself after the main service. Is that right? Yeah, and then we had a spectacular Sunday offering to build the new building, and I gave $100,000 in that. Really, brother? Yes, I did. And that's why God did what he did for me. Every, I didn't hear Jesus in there nowhere. Nowhere. I didn't, hear, I didn't hear the grace of God. I didn't hear because of what he provided. I just heard everything I did. And then you come to church and you want your pastor to tell you how to fix your marriage. Tell me what I need to do to fix my marriage. Tell me what I need to do to get me a husband. Tell me what I need to do to get out of debt. Tell me what I need to do to get these bills paid. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me you who desire to be under the law. Hmm. Say, oh no, this doesn't apply to me. It does. Galatians is for you. Say amen. 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 We all it's in your flesh. Since day one, eat of this tree mm. and you will make yourself like God. They were already like God. Genesis 126, let us make man in our image after our, Life. they were already like God. Satan got them to try to do something in their own power that God had given them freely. Mm, yes. And what did it cost them? Everything. Everything. Yeah. That's where the church is today. That's why the church is void of power. Because Romans, Romans says, the way you make void the promises of God, nullify, is when you try to live by your own strength. That's not what the church believes. They're going to teach you five steps to this. Now, am I saying that we don't do things? No. Hear what I'm saying. Don't hear what I'm not saying. If you're doing to make God do something, you're under law. If you're doing because you're letting him work in you, it is God who worketh in you, both to will, meaning giving you the desire, you want to. Under the new covenant, you want to. Under the old covenant, they didn't want to. God had to take, it's like taking, uh, it's like taking a, uh, a, a fish out of water. He doesn't want to live out of water. But under the New Testament, God gives you gills and you want to live in the water. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So he says, God works in you both to will and to what? Do. do. There is a doing, but it's the result of him working in you. Amen. The Old Testament, God is not in them. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? He said that the New Testament people, the Old Testament did not have God in them. God was outside. They had a cold stone with 10 commandments on it. If they kept it, then God would move. That's law. It's, in, it's, it's, it's not sensitive. There's no intimacy involved. God is not in you. You're empty. And God demands from you perfection. And if you can do it, God will bless you. Somebody says, well, God has changed his standard today. He no longer uh, asks for perfection. That's not true. God cannot change. 
Jesus changed you. Mm. Amen. He made you a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now you may not, you may be doing a poor job of manifesting who you are, but nonetheless, God sees you perfect, holy, righteous, because his son, Christ in you, he's there. Are you with me? And he loves you. And he has made you right with himself. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. So the Old Testament, it's tell me what I need to do. And the church today, for the most part, is still there. What do I need to do? Ooh, today going to be a good service. Pastor going to tell us the nine steps of how to get the blessing. Really? I thought Jesus already got the blessing for you. So now what we need to do is keep hearing what's been done for us. And as you hear, what, we, what did we start with earlier? Salvation's working. Just keep hearing. Are you with me? Amen. Or are you going home? No. You're here. Amen. Present. Yes. Amen. Sometimes you're here, but you're not really here. Amen. You're thinking about, well, after this, I'm going to go to Chit Chat Diner. Uh, after this, I'm going to, I got to. No, don't do that. Be present. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he says, tell me. Y'all want to be under the law, right? They said, yeah, that's what everybody's preaching on TV and we should be living by the law. He says, okay, watch this. Verse 22. For it is written, Abraham had two sons. How many did he have? Two. God only acknowledged how many? One. Warning. Abraham had two sons. The one by a bondmaid, her name is what? The other by a free woman. What's her name? Sarah. Verse 23. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the? Flesh. But he of the free woman was born by the? Promise. promise. In other words, God keeping his word. God doing it. Okay. Verse 24. Which things are an allegory? Look at Paul preaching from the Old Testament, New Covenant truth. This is how we minister. Same way. He's using an Old Testament thing to produce a picture of the New Testament. Verse 24. These things are an allegory. These things are the what? Two covenants. Two covenants. See, you can see the New Testament under the Old Testament. Amen. These things are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, that's where God gave the law, Exodus 20. 20. The uh, uh, one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and she answers to Jerusalem that now is and is in bondage with her children. Now, this is confusing if you're reading it in the King James. This is all he's saying. The first, he, he talks about Jerusalem. So he says, there's a Jerusalem that is now present. We know it. It's still present. Amen. It's in Israel. There's a Jerusalem that's now present. That's where the Jews live. That's where the law is preached. That's where that kind of relationship with God is held, a, a performance-based relationship. Here's his point. He says, but then there's another Jerusalem that's above. That's the next verse. We're getting ready to read that. There are two Jerusalems. There's one that's on the earth, that's natural, and then there's one that's in heaven, or the kingdom of God. Okay? That's, called, that's found in Hebrews 13. The new Jerusalem is where you and I are right now with Christ. Heavenly places. All right? Let, let's keep reading and then we'll, we'll look at that. All right, now watch this. For the, Verse 25. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and she answers to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. Verse 26. But the Jerusalem which is above is free, and she is our mother. What Jerusalem is he referring to that is above? Go to Hebrews. Hold your place in Galatians. Go to Hebrews. What's the Jerusalem that's above? I want to make sure you get this. <clears throat> What's the Jerusalem that's above? Hebrews 12. He's not talking about the Jerusalem that's going to descend from heaven when Jesus returns. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about right now there's a Jerusalem that's, that's present. There's a, there's a citizenship. There's a kingdom that's functioning right now. Right now, there's a kingdom. It's called the kingdom of God. 
And God's people are citizens of that kingdom. Amen. We are not of this world. Amen. Even though we're in the world, we're not of the world. We are, the Bible calls you an ambassador. Amen. Think about an ambassador. We have, we're privileged to have the UN so close to us. Those people who come from foreign, they, let me put it this way. If you went to another nation as an ambassador of the United States of America, you would not be governed by that nation's laws. You are funded and cared for and fully taken care of by the country which you are representing. In fact, the moment you stay, even if you're in Africa, if you go on a U.S. embassy, you are now on U.S. soil. You know that, right? U.S. law applies there, even though they're in a different... You're, when people come in your presence, they're in, the, they're in the presence of Almighty God. If sickness comes in your presence, it's got to bow. If poverty comes in, it's an outlaw spirit. It's got to bow to the laws of this kingdom. Under this kingdom, there's joy and peace, fullness of it. Under this kingdom, there's wisdom and direction. Under this kingdom, there's prosperity, health, and life. Under this kingdom, your children shall be mighty on the earth. Any, any, any person that Satan sends to try to get them off track, you take your authority. Amen. They can't touch that. That, that. Those children belong to me. Amen? They can't touch your body. They can't touch your finances. Amen? Now you need to hear, I'm preaching better than what you're responding. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Hall. You understand what I'm telling you? Okay, now watch this. Verse 12, I mean, uh, Hebrews 12, where are we? Uh, verse 22. Hebrews 12, verse 22. Watch this. But you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city, somebody say city, city. of the living God. What's the city of the living God? The heavenly, the heavenly Jerusalem. Look at this. Look at what you got in this city. Watch this. You've come to a, a, an innumerable company of angels. You got angels. Now, we need to teach on angels, and we will. But you got angels, Lise. Innumerable. What do angels do? Okay. What? That's what angels do. All those are the benefits. Angel's primary job, the job of your angel. Watch this. You're in Hebrews, right? Stay there. Go to one. Hebrews one. What's the primary job of an angel? Watch this. Verse 13. Hebrews one, verse 13. Are you with me so far? Yeah. All right. Hebrews 1, 13. When you got to say, I got it. All right, now watch this. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool? Verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits? What's their job? They've been sent forth to minister for them. Not, not necessarily to them. Now, it includes that. But if you just think their job is to minister to you, then what about your children? What about... Uh, when you're going to another country. What about situations that you don't even, let's say you have stocks in something and you don't even know anything about what's going on behind the scenes with some guy who's crooked, like it would happen with Enron. You know, people insider trading. See, someone says, no, angels wouldn't do that. Well then, see, you're not believing what the Bible said. <laughs> they have been sent forth to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. Their job is to serve you in the area of God's plan of salvation. Amen. Go to Psalm 91 real quick. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. And one day we'll teach on angels. I'll give you a little toast bread now. While we're here, may as well talk about it. Psalm 91. Watch this. This is a very familiar psalm. A lot of people don't even realize this is happening because of angels. Why are y'all laughing at me over here? Uh, all right. Psalm 91. Now watch this. Psalm 91, look at this. Verse, let's start in verse 1. Psalm 91, verse 1. When you have it, say, I have it. Yes. All right. He that dwelleth, now keep your fingers loose in case we have to look at some other scriptures that the Holy Ghost tells us. Okay, now watch this. 
He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Stop. Are you dwelling in the secret place of the Most High? Yes. Because if you're not, this, this, you, can just, you need to just turn over this page in your Bible. It doesn't apply to you. This, this, this psalm only applies to those who are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Are you dwelling in the secret place of the Most High? How do you know you are? Because I'm in Christ and he's in me, okay. <laughs> what is the secret place? The place of See, you got to be able to answer it. Because see, if Satan comes to you, you leave here tomorrow. I mean, you leave here. You wake up tomorrow. The Bible says he comes what? Immediately mm -hmm. for the word. Yes, that, that's just period. That's end of story. Whether you like it or not. Whether you think, well, you know, let's not talk about the devil. You know, I don't want to talk about the devil. No, you need to talk about the devil because you have an adversary, the devil, who goes about as a roaring lion. So you need to identify your enemy. Mm -hmm. Jesus taught you. He comes immediately for what? The word. For the word. Not because of you. He don't care nothing about you. You're not so special. He's coming for the word. The word is, is the power. He don't want the power. Mm -hmm. He's coming after the word. Amen? Amen. Now, how do you know you dwell in the secret place? Because if he come after you, he's going to shoot a thought. Well, yeah, these things in this Psalm 91 are true, but they don't apply to you because how do you even know what the secret place is? Mm -hmm. You're not dwelling in the secret place. Okay. Let's see what the secret place is. Let's see what the secret place is. The word secret here is the Hebrew word uh, hidden. If you keep something secret, you keep it hidden, obviously. It's you don't even have to go to the Hebrew. That's common sense. To hide something is to keep it a secret. Now, what is the hidden place or the secret place of God? Let's go find that out. <clears throat> Colossians. New Testament. To your right. Colossians. Colossians. Chapter 3. When you have it, say, I have it. Colossians chapter 3. Man, those of you who got your uh, electronic Bibles, man, you're grateful today. The rest of us are, oh, dear God. But I, I still prefer it this way. Because, see, I can keep my finger. I can still, I can, get, I can get there quicker than you. I do get there quicker than a lot of y'all. But I already got a jump start. I kind of know, I hear it first and then I tell you and then you have to find it. I already know where I'm going. I hear the inside voice. All right, Colossians 3, when you have it, say, I have it. All right, now watch this. What's the hidden place? What's the secret place? Let's find this out. Because if we can locate this, then the 91st Psalm applies to you and I today. Amen. Don't ever forget, all the promises of God are yes. Amen. See, anything you read in the Bible, God's talking to you, but not really you. It's for your benefit, but he's really not talking to you. He's talking to who? Christ. Amen. And you're in him. So it, it's, it belongs to you. God will never again just talk directly to you. He did that once. He made a covenant with one man. We already went there one time. We're not doing that again. Because we're subject to failure. So he makes a covenant with the perfect man. Mm -hmm. There is one mediator between God and man. The man. Christ Jesus. So he makes a covenant with the man. And then he puts all of man. If you accept him inside the perfect man. Mm -hmm. Amen. So always see God. God is always talking to the man. And guess what? Your life, you're crucified with Christ, but you live. But not you. Christ is now, he's your life. Amen? All right, so watch this. Uh, Colossians 3, look at this. Verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ. How many of y'all raised up with Christ? Amen. How did you do that? Huh? Good job. Romans 10, 9, 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, what? Alright, hold on, wait, thank you. You're the only one I'm sure is saved. Everybody else. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, what? The Lord Jesus. And believe with thine heart that God did what? Raised him from the dead. Then thou shalt be what? Saved. If you then be risen with Christ or raised from the dead, what does that imply? You've been what? Saved. He's talking to born again people here. Amen. Now watch this. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Stop. What's the above place? No, stop. Don't go to the secret place yet. See, I see what the Holy Ghost is doing. I did, but hold on. Above. What did we read in Hebrews? What is the above place? 
Good job. <laughs> New Jerusalem, which is what? Yes, yes. Above. Yes. The city of the living God. We're going to find out what's in this city. But he says, set your attention on what's above. Mm -hmm. Don't focus on down here. Focus on the kingdom that you're now a citizen of. Amen. Mm -hmm. Focus on the above place. Now, there's something special about the above. When the Bible uses the word above, he's talking something very specific. Mm. I'm going to show it to you. Go to, hold your place in Colossians. Go to Deuteronomy 28. Go there. Go there. Don't care what you think. You're going to make sure you, I'm going to make sure you get this. Go to Deuteronomy 28. You're getting blessed whether you know it or not. Amen. You're getting blessed. I'm, I know I'm following the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, I don't think the Holy Spirit would take us through all these verses. Well... <laughs> I know I'm not following the devil, so, so it's got to be devil wouldn't show. I know for sure the devil don't want you to see this. <laughs> Amen. All right, now watch this. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. When the Bible uses the word above, it's, he's doing that for a reason. Seek those things that are above. Seek those things that are above. Seek those things that are above. What's above? Deuteronomy 28. Watch this, verse 1. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it will come to pass if you hearken diligently. Everybody there? Yes. It will come to pass if you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God and you do all of his commandments that I command you this day. Excuse me. That the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, for the, under the Old Testament, how did they get on high? How did they get above? Huh? The commandments. Right? Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. The only way they can get above... The only way they get to the on high, to the above place, is they've got to keep all the commandments. You keep the commandments, I'll set you on high far above. Right? That's what you read, right? In Colossians, how did you get above? If Christ was raised from, not Hebrews yet, stay with Colossians. If Christ be risen from the dead, you're now above. Put your attention where you are now. Seek that. See, under the Old Testament, the way they got above was through their strength. Under the New Testament, the way you got to the above place is because Jesus was raised from the dead. Amen. Why was Jesus raised from the dead? Romans chapter 4 tells you, to make you right with God, mm -hmm. to forgive you of your sins. Amen. You see, under the Old Testament, they had to keep the commandments to be right with God. Under the New Testament, Christ becomes your righteousness. He gives you the right. He gives you the ability to access New Jerusalem, which is above. Amen. That's the dream of Israel. Israel, Israel is not focused on getting blessed. They're focused on keeping the commandments and being right with God. Because if they're right with God, then they get on high and they get above. What happens when you're above? Look at it. He tells you. Look at it. What happens when you get on the above place? Watch it. This is why, Je good girl. This is why Jesus said, don't seek what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Don't focus on all that. Don't focus on the blessing. Keep first things first. Right standing with God. For, for them under the Old Testament, it came through doing the law. For us under the New Testament, it comes through believing on him who was raised from the dead. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Okay, now watch this. Deuteronomy 28. Look at this. What happens to those who are above? Look. Verse 2. And. And is a conjunction. And only comes after they were set on high above. Stick with me now. I'm going to show you a truth. Stick with me. Let's read verse 1 again. And it will come to pass if you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God. And if you keep all my commandments that I command you this day. What does God do? Does God start blessing you? No, that's not the first thing you see. The first thing you see is I'm going to set you on high above. You keep my commandments, I'm setting you on high above. That's the first priority. Keep my commandments or be right with me. Keep my commandments, be right with me, I'll set you on high above. What happens once you're on high above? And all these blessings will come on you and overtake you in the above place. In the above place. You only get to the above place by keeping the commandments. Why were they trying to keep the commandments? Go to chapter 6, Deuteronomy, stay there. Deuteronomy 6, why were they trying to keep the commandments? Deuteronomy 6. I don't want to just assume you know these things. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6. Verse 20. When you have it, say, I got it. 
Okay. Deuteronomy is one of the most important books that you will ever have or that you can ever study in your entire life. Somebody says, why? Do you realize that when Jesus was tempted by the devil, right? 40 days, 40 nights, tempted by the devil. He spoke to the devil three times. It is written, it is written three times, right? Do you know where all of those verses came from? Book of Deuteronomy. Everything is written for a reason. Amen. <clears throat> Some of y'all are letting the devil put you on the run. Messing with your children, messing with your health, messing with your emotions, you're putting depression on you. Put him on the run. Take the sword of the spirit, the word of God. You go in this and you begin to read the I think every born again Christian should have in their Bible. Your Bible should just kind of automatically open to Galatians 3.13. <coughs> And Deuteronomy 28. Why? Because Galatians 3.13 says Jesus came to redeem you from the curse of the law. Deuteronomy 28 tells you what those curses are and then the blessings that you have now through Christ. You should, you should, that should be part of your daily feeding. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all eat eggs every morning? Mm -hmm. I know y'all do, Catherine, so you should be real. I know Dave does. Mm -hmm. You eat breakfast every morning. You should be feeding on that every morning. Amen. Man does not live by bread alone. That doesn't say don't eat. You need to eat. But when you sit down to eat your breakfast, take out your Bible. Take you a minute just to read it. If you start training yourself to do that, that's what Smith Wigglesworth used to do. He'd carry a little Bible, a pocket Bible, keep it in his, in his he'd sit down in a restaurant, open public. And while the waiter's getting his food, he'd open his Bible and just read it. Smith Wigglesworth raised 26 people documented from the dead. Documented, not preacher's story, not what we said. Hospital, they were in the morgue, dead. Am I right about the black song? Dead. You can read it. Documented, 26 people raised him from the dead. I wonder why. Faith comes by hearing. Faith, and he raised his wife. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing, hearing, hearing. See, when you read the, when you go through Matthew and you read Ma or the Gospels and you go and you see, for example, the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. So we look at that and we think, oh, Jesus has raised me up and, uh, and my life has changed and, he's, and, he's, and he told everybody to unwrap me and I've I'm, I'm been free, I've been delivered. That's good, but don't stay there. As he is, so are you in this world. You should be looking at it from his perspective. Meditate on you raising somebody from the dead. Mm. Meditate on you opening up blinded eyes. Meditate on you taking that two-piece fish dinner and feeding 5,000. That's called supernatural multiplication. If you don't have enough money and you want your debts paid, start reading that verse. Yes. Somebody says, that doesn't work. How did it work for him then? Mm -hmm. Say, well, we don't really believe that. I know you don't. Mm -hmm. That's your problem. Mm -hmm. You believe you're reading the story. See, you think you read in a fable. This is true. As he is, so are we in this world. You need to start reading the Bible to see him. Because he is you. The new creation is Christ in you. Jesus said, the same works I do, you will do and greater. When are we going to believe that? Amen. You, you get your paycheck, you come home. If it's not enough, set it on the table. Put it in the hands of the master. Believe him that as he multiplied the fish and bread, he'll multiply you. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God will multiply your finances. Say, well, I, really? Yeah. See, that's your problem. That's your problem. You don't believe. You know why you don't believe? Because you spend all your time watching CNN and NBC. And you're not spending time focusing on what he on who he is. You don't even know how to live like him because you don't even know who he is. Amen. Amen. Jesus has set you on high above. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. What's above? All the blessings. Start thinking blessing minded. You think cursed minded. That's how most people think. They think there's sickness. I'm going to get sick. Let me take my flu shot. That's cursed minded. Think, well, I only make $50,000 a year. How am I? See, you think Jesus never looked at what he didn't have. Amen. He took what he had 
and he began to focus. The Bible says he looked above and he blessed it. Think blessing minded. This is what Paul is saying. What, what, always let the Bible interpret the Bible. God says in Deuteronomy 28, you keep my commandments, I'll set you on high above. Paul says you don't have to keep commandments now to be on, on high above. The only thing you got to do to be on high above now is believe in the risen Christ. And if you believe in him, you're on high above. Now start setting your mind on what's above. Start thinking in harmony with the word. Amen. You're blessed. But you think, well, you know, no, no, it's not me. I don't got enough education. I ain't the right color. I'm not the right gender. I'm too old. Stop all that. Set your mind on things that are above. What's above? I will set you on high above if you keep all my commandments. We don't have to do that. That's, we just have to believe on the risen Christ. And all these blessings will come on you and overtake you. That's what you need to be thinking. But if you don't spend time reading the blessing and the word of God, you won't even know what to set your mind on. You can't think on things that are good and honest and pure and true and loving and of a good report because you're so focused down here on the low level. Yeah. On the low level instead of up here where the eagles are. Amen. You do know he makes your mind up on wings like yeah. eagles. Yeah. Not down here on this low level. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to keep the commandments? Look at real quick. Deuteronomy 6 verse 20. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what's the meaning of these testimonies, these judgments, which the Lord commanded us? In other words, what's the reason for the commandments? You, you see it, Crystal? Well, why did, he said, one day your son's going to come to you. You know, little old Ira is going to come up to his daddy. And he's going to say, <clears throat> Abba, why did God give us these ten commandments? Look at the answer God gives. Look at the answer God gives. <clears throat> Skip down. Verse 24. And the Lord commanded us to do all these commandments, these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. Verse 25. And it shall be our what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. What's the purpose of keeping the commandments? It shall be our righteousness. righteousness. Notice our not from God. It's a self-righteousness. Under the New Testament, what's given to you as a gift? God's righteousness. God gives you right standing with himself as a gift, freely given. By believing on the risen Christ. That's how you get above today. You get above today by believing on the risen Christ. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Lisa, Jesus is Lord, and believe with thine heart that God raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. Now you're on the above place. You're there. You're not trying to get there. You're there. You're there. Now it's just a matter of setting our mind on what's above. Renewing our mind with the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 28. <clears throat> and all these blessings will come on thee and they will overtake thee in this above place. So go back to Colossians. Chapter 3. And you'll be able to understand this verse better now. Colossians 3. When you have it, say I have it. I have it. Look at this. If you then... Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. If you then, he's reasoning with them. If you're born again, why are you staying down here? Is what he's saying to them, Lisa. If you've been saved and you've been given access to this above place where Jesus is, the risen Christ. Why are you living down here as a dead man? Why? If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Here's a really good way to understand this verse. I don't know if you caught it or not. You're already on the right. You're already on the above. In the above place. Because of the risen Jesus. Now how do you get these blessings to start working for you? Okay. 
Notice where Christ sitteth on the right hand. S seated always speaks of resting. Yes. Mm. So you're right, Black, Miss Blackstone. Because we who believe do, do enter into the rest. rest. So it is believing. But see, if you're, let me explain something to you. If you're over here, let's say you're dealing with sickness or something in your body. And you're over here, or financial. Let's say financial. And you're over here. God, I, I got to get these bills paid. God, I, I, I got to get this debt paid. Don't have enough money. I, I calculated. I got to get, I got to get this taken care of. And you're gritting your teeth. And it's, it's burdensome to you. You're not in faith. Amen. You're approaching it from the wrong way. No, no, you're not in faith. It's a work. S stay seated. Rest. The mind that Paul is telling them, Christ is already seated. It's done. Stay seated with him. Stay at rest. Let the blessing work and overtake you. Just stay seated. Labor to enter into rest. You don't need to be walking around. Like, oh, man, I, I, I got to get these bills paid. I got I to get this. Oh, don't you understand that they, uh, I need this money by? No, see, you're already in the wrong place. Just stay seated. Father, I want to thank you that all my needs are supplied, sir. The Lord is my shepherd. I do. You know when the Bible says the Lord is your shepherd, he's referring to this very thing that Paul is saying here, that, you've been that you're born again? Jesus could only become your shepherd if he was raised from the dead. Good, I'm glad you gave me that look. Go to Hebrews. You gave me a reason to make everybody turn. It's your fault. Go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, I'm glad. I'm glad. Huh? Miss Olive. I was just waiting for somebody to... Watch this. I just wanted somebody to look at me like I was crazy. So I could have a reason to turn you over there. All right, Hebrews 13. You should actually want to go and see it. Amen. Amen. You should want to. You should not just let somebody just talk to you anything. You should believe. All right. Hebrews 13. Now watch this. Hebrews 13, verse 20. When you have it, say, I got it. I got it. All right, everybody got it? All right, look at this. Now the God of peace. Somebody say peace. Peace. What does peace mean? Nothing missing. missing. Nothing lacking or broken. Now watch this. Now the God of peace. That brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, now that he's risen, notice what he became. The Hebrews 13, verse 20. Yes. Now, you're messing up my preaching. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus. What did you have to believe to be saved? That God raised Jesus from the dead. What are you saying when you make that confession? The same confession David made in the 23rd Psalm. Mm. Look, he can only become your shepherd after he was raised from. He only has legal right to care for you mm. after he took care of your sins. Mm. He could not li physically, literally, legally have the right to take care of you unless he cleansed you. Paid for all of you, unless he bought you to himself. Do you understand that? He had to redeem you from the hands of the kingdom of darkness, make you his own. Now he can care for you as a, you belong to him. In other words, he he took care of your the issue between he, you and him. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. Because God raised him from the dead, he has now become the great shepherd of. That's me. That's me. That's how I teach Ella to read the Bible. Or well, when we pray, that's me, Daddy. I got it now. The Bible's talking to you. You're the sheep here. Amen? That's me. It's mine. I got it now. Amen? amen. Say amen. amen. The great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. In other words, all your sins dealt with, Jack. You're forgiven. You're righteous. You're holy, blameless, and without fault. He's now your shepherd. Amen? amen. You don't have a want. A good place for you to amen. You missed it. I say, I say, you don't have a want. Amen. 
Now you say, no, I do. See, you're not letting the scripture get in the way of what you believe. The Bible says if the Lord is your shepherd, you don't want. Mm -hmm. Is he, did he get, was he raised from the dead or not? Yeah. Then he's your shepherd. Yeah. And if he's your shepherd, you don't have a want. Right. I don't care what it looks like, you don't have a want. He is leading you beside still waters. He's resting you in green pastures. He is leading you in the paths of righteousness. Even in the darkest hour of your life, he's with you. And he's already prepared the table for you. He's already set the table up in the presence of the devil. So what of them? Just keep eating. Amen. Look away from all that will distract. Keep your eye on him. Just keep. He says you're sick. Feel the pain. You say I'm healed by his stripes. Don't you see what this say? Amen. Amen. You don't move from it. Amen. And surely he has anointed your head with oil. He sent his spirit. Or we could say this. He sent the Lord Jesus. Because Jesus is the head of the church which is his body. And Jesus is the Messiah or the anointed one. Amen. He hath anointed my head. In other words, God is blessing me through the headship, the lordship of Jesus. He has anointed my head with all because Jesus now is the head of the church. This is exactly what Ephesians uh, 1 says. Paul says, I pray that they begin to see the power of the risen Jesus, that you raised him on high, set him far above, and you made him the head of the church for the benefit of the church. That's what Psalm 23 says. The Lord has anointed my head. Jesus is the head of the church with oil. What happens to you now because Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Your cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will now pursue you. Now we bring you in it because he's head of the church. God is moving in your life through him, not through you. Say amen. amen. Say amen. It's mine. When you say amen, you know what you're doing? So be it. It's so. That's what you're literally saying. So be You're doing what Mary did. You need to learn to say amen. Amen. It's mine. So be it. He is my head. Surely goodness and mercy is pursuing me. My cup is running over. Amen. Amen. Do you realize under the law they could not amen the blessings of God? We looked at that. We touched on the fringes of that in the beginning of the church. We're going to do it again. Under the law, you read it. Deuteronomy 26. They could not amen the blessing. They could only amen the curse. Because it said he will come. You remember we talked about that a little bit, Catherine. He will come. When he comes in, you can get, when he comes, 2 Corinthians 1.20 goes into effect. Now, all the promises of God are yes. Now we can give the amen. amen. You couldn't give the amen under the old covenant. He hadn't come yet. Your head had not come yet. The one who deserved and earned the blessings of God so that you could have them by grace had not come yet. You can't amen something that you don't have a right to. All the promises of God were made to Christ, to Abraham and his seed. Where the promise is made. He did not say you. How can you amen something that doesn't belong to you? But now if Christ be in you. Then now there's hope for glory. Yeah. Amen? amen. Now you can amen those promises. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well it's 1145. Went 15 minutes over. We never got back to the 91st sign. Never got to Joshua and Jacob. Never got. <laughs> but you did get what. You did get something. Amen. amen. Now next. Yes sir. Amen. Amen. Next week, what we're going to do is you got a good foundation. Amen. All right. So we're going to jump back into uh, jo uh, yeah. Jacob and Esau. We're going to study that and uh, you're going to be blessed. But God gave you what you needed today. Amen. 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 He gave you what you needed today. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Praise God. Father, we give you praise. Amen.